Hello. In this demonstration, we're going to be working with the element texture. So you are going to need your 18 by 24 sheet of drawing paper. And you can see here how I have an array of um, tools that we're going to be using today. So you need a small piece of your vine charcoal. Okay, uh, not your compressed charcoal. We need the softer vine charcoal. Uh, your large three inch brush. Uh, it can be a household brush. It doesn't have to be a watercolor brush or anything fancy. Honestly, we're working with texture, so the rougher the brush, the better. But a good big brush, three inches, is what I would like. Anything to that scale would work, um, or just get the biggest brush that you have. Um, and then a, maybe a couple more smaller brushes. Again, I have just a disposable household painter's brush, which is going to work great for this assignment. So if you have something like that, that's real bristly that'll work or your regular watercolor brush would work as well. Um, I also want you to have, um, this is called a, a palette knife that's used for oil painting. Um, if you don't have it, uh, any type of a uh, flat uh, metal tool could work, possibly a kitchen utensil, maybe a uh, scraper that you have in your garage would work good too so or any or even just a flat stick or something something that you can trial and um, create some some interesting movement when we work with your gesso which is the last thing you're going to need is a uh, an amount of gesso I have a large container here but uh, if you have the quart can that would work great um, and you can tell that when you open up your gesso uh, gesso is not like paint uh, it's more of a plaster like material because it does have silica in there which is what is in plaster or a fine fine stone um, and that's why it's a primer and, and it's used to prime uh, canvases and and almost anything you can you can put gesso on any type of paper on on most substances and it's going to uh, add what's called a tooth to that surface so uh, you could draw on it paint on it um, uh, and do a lot with it so uh, in drawing um, we do a lot of gesso work as well today we're going to be working with texture so your gesso is going to be good to use in order to create various types of texture because it's a little thicker than actual paint like I said it has a, an amount of plaster or marble dust in it um, so uh, we can definitely use that better than paint to create some textures um, and we're going to be using uh, all your brushes that you have and your palette knife to play with some designs or play with some textures so then we can draw on top of that an image or some forms so we are playing with a, a raised uh, actual texture um, so uh, that's kind of the terminology for this part of the first uh, the first part of the process is putting an actual texture on your paper um, so we'll get to that in a bit so the first thing that I want you to do is uh, grab a hold of your vine charcoal and you see I broke a good maybe two inch or an inch and a half or a long stick of that and I want you to use the side of it not like how we've been drawing with the tip but the side of it and I want you just to first off make some just make some bold large marks you see how I have just something that I've done pretty fast um, you know and you know try your best to fill in a lot of the areas you know we, we don't have to completely cover this sheet of paper with any with with a completely blacking out with charcoal we just want an amount on there and hopefully uh, that will help us uh, gray out or tone out the gesso since it's white so we can kind of already get some different tones and shadows um, so go ahead and kind of just you see what I've done here I've just made a simple kind of uh, design here using the side using some bold marks um, again pretty simple again this is more just to treat the surface so we're not just dealing with white you know we're dealing with some tone or some shadow it's going to be subtle but it's going to help the gesso uh, you know uh, darken the tones a little bit so we like I said so we can already see some texture and some shadow now after you're done with that let's go ahead and start off with your larger brush and go ahead and you know dip an amount really soak that brush really well with some good amount of, of gesso now I have a, a specific kind of brand of gesso here you might have a different brand so your gesso might be a little bit thinner or a little bit thicker depending this is a pretty thick gesso you can see how it's not coming off but that's good you know I, like I said we're going to want to build some textures uh, or at least raise some of that actual texture so we can then have to deal with that later on when we're 
want to create an image on there. Um, so all I'm going to do is just start off with possibly, you know, maybe some sim the same movement that I was doing. And you can see how, you know, that gesso is so thick. Um, and I'll zoom in in a bit so you can see that's leaving some texture within that movement of my brush. So remember, we're trying to add texture, so I don't want you to feather it out or really try to lay that, you know, um, um, smoothly. I want you to utilize the lines that the gesso creates or the ridges that the gesso creates with your brush and use it as a design element, okay? Now I'll zoom in here a bit so we can kind of get a sense of maybe some of those shadows that we're working with. I'm going to do it one more time and maybe you can get a better idea of some of that shadow movement again. Really soaking up that brush with as much gesso as I can put on there. Okay, trying to use the largest brush. And again, swipe it the other way. Now remember, you can do your own... Uh, set of lines here or designs i'm just doing like these nice kind of snake s curves here because i really like that uh, form you can do strokes up and down okay but let's start off with some strokes first and then we'll play with some different type of texture let me move up a little bit so you can see me approach the other part top corner Here I go. And again, remember, try your best to utilize the shadows of those textures, almost like lines, like you're drawing. I'm gonna zoom out here so you can get a sense of uh, what else, what I have so far okay so that is my first set of texture okay and i'm going to go ahead since it's still wet and i can still play around with that texture because you know it's thick it's going to take a while to dry and you know possibly grab your palette knife you know grab your um stick you know just grab anything okay um it can even be your finger and i'm going to go ahead now and try to do some interesting kind of movement within that wetness of that gesso. And you can see how my gesso is pretty thick, so it's definitely forming some shape to it. Now, the thing you're going to have to kind of realize is that, you know, once you put your gesso on, it's, it's, it's pretty much hard to get off because, you know, you're dealing with a, a, a very fluid material. So, like everything that we do, it's probably good to do some preliminary uh, sketches in your sketchbook. Maybe do the same type of motion first. In order to kind of get your uh, get your idea down, so I'm going to kind of keep playing with some of this texture and, and see what happens. Now, I don't have to go all the way. I can stop whenever I want. Again, I'm trying to create a pattern here of texture, so I'm trying my best to utilize the same motion throughout. Again, try a few sketches in your sketchbook and then approach your design with a plan. I'm going to continue on, zooming in here. See that buildup of that gesso creating... And that's why a palette knife is really good. And you can pick these up pretty cheaply at any art supply store and like I said I mean it, it really does 
make a difference when you have the right tools now but anything will work So as you can see here, I've decided not to continue on with my palette knife texture. I've decided to stop up here because I'm really enjoying what's happening here with some of that uh, curvy of that brushwork. Now after you have uh, some you know, designs based off of your larger brush and you've maybe done some palette work, uh, I want you to switch to your smaller one inch brush and let's try to incorporate some in some of the negative spacing, some um, some different texture and, and, and maybe try to separate it by going in a different direction. So I do have this kind of organic shape. What happens when I uh, combine maybe a, um, a more um, uh, 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 mathematical or grid-like pattern? So again, I'm using a pretty, a pretty uh, uh, rough brush here. So it's definitely going to add some of those marks. So again, play with those shadows. Okay, so I'm just adding some interesting kind of striping in the background of some texture. Again, I'm more so trying to separate the two types of textures. And again, let that just so really, really kind of take that shadowing. And that's all we're doing. Again, it's just really trying to play with some texture and some pattern. Again, you have to work kind of swift, and you see how I do have my uh, tray here so I can keep my larger brush wet and my palette knife uh, wet. So make sure that you do have a container so you can keep these brushes clean. Continue on. Now I'm going to stop right there because, like I said, I want to be able to work with my medium here, my gesso. While it's wet, it does dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause there for a bit and see if I can do a little bit of palette work here in some of this stripe line that I got here. So let's see, what can I do? Let me go ahead and do a, a movement up. Okay, try here. So I'm just kind of doing a swipe up and just a, a cross just to kind of maybe segment some texture. Try over here. Again, I'm trying to do an opposite design or texture as I did with a three inch brush. And you know, I want you to work naturally. I want you to play with it, see what happens. And uh, you know, don't stress too much about it. It's all about experimenting, okay, up here as well. And that gesso is, is, is really a joy to work with because I'm, I'm a sculptor as well. So I, I definitely love plaster and I love the way that it casts that shadow. Okay, now when you are doing this assignment, I do advise you to try to get a, a, you know, a spotlight, maybe a desk lamp. So you can really play with those shadows and maybe even like darken the room all the way and, and just have your lamp there. And of course that will help you. Um, design those shadows nicely. Design that texture. Okay. Okay, I'm going to come up here to the top corner here and kind of do the same thing, making sure again I'm contrasting that larger shape that I have and trying to get as much texture on there as possible. And what's gonna happen is that that gesso is gonna dry. So some of this uh, texture will shrink down and, um, and uh, also the charcoal behind the first layer that we put will uh, bleed through as that uh, gesso dries. So you should have some interesting transparency occurring that then later on we can play with after we're done adding some texture. Again, trying to almost just spackle that texture on right now just so I can get as much as I can. So I'm not necessarily doing any graceful movement here. Again, really just applying the texture, an actual texture.
Now I'm going to try to make some of this similar segmented texture I did at the bottom. Okay, and I have my damp cloth here so I make sure I can keep my palette knife here nice and clean. There we go, again, kind of more of a geometric shape in the back, separating that background. Simple swipe, lift up, and then a swipe to the side. I can achieve some really interesting ridges. So again, it's your choice whether or not you want to, you know, do something very linear or like what I'm doing with these ridges or something a lot more, um, maybe you can grab an interesting sponge and do some tapping to create some of that type of texture. But always remember, doing an initial plan in your sketchbook is going to be the way to really be comfortable with an assignment like this because, you know, we're getting into more experimentation and, do, and having to deal with a lot more form when you uh, begin to m create more mixed media creative drawing. Getting some real good lift there, so I'm going to keep that. Okay. I'm going to continue down here at the bottom as well, making sure I get and utilize the whole page here. Again, it's great working on a scale like this to begin to learn how to creative draw because a lot more space. And of course, remember, your, your body is involved once you st step that scale up a bit, not relying on the chair or the desk or the, or your, you know, when you draw in a sketchbook, you're um, probably drawing on your knee, freeing up that whole body now. Okay. Again, moving to my palette knife and finishing off the set. Okay, looks like I'm done with the bottom there. Let me go ahead and zoom out now so we can get a sense of what's happening. I'll do a frontal view as well in a bit. I have the lights adjusted so hopefully I can get a lot more shadow. But as you can see here, we're getting some interesting, you know, pattern of some texture moving. Um, the, the charcoal underneath is creating a transparency uh, almost a tone as that is uh, drying so that's going to be more um, exposing as, as it uh, as it dries now uh, you're going to have to at some point after you're done with this texture is let this dry for a matter of uh, a time it might have to be overnight because uh, uh, it's a lot of gesso probably that you're moving around so it's going to take some time um, if you can remember to tape down your your um your assignment so you can really work with that movement and, and, and scraping and it's not a it's not shrinking too much as it as it's uh, uh, soaking up that moisture in the gesso remember that uh, paper likes to soak in that moisture this only can work on good drawing paper so we can really really work with that material and I'm gonna go ahead and finish out and then give you a frontal view and then we'll continue on so I'm up here at the top right corner up here and I'm gonna do one final um, movement here so I can finish off my texture and then okay and then we'll look at it vertically but I'm going to go ahead and make sure I end that S or this I'm getting a, a snake form is what's appearing as I'm working with it I'm just going to kind of round that edge out with some texture 
this end here so I can maybe do something with that with some texture here and you can overlap you can see how when that layer of gesso has dried underneath you can definitely add some more on top of that to create maybe a different texture on top of texture so again you're going to spend some time allowing things to dry and then you can go back and look at it okay I'll go ahead and do a little bit of work up there and then I can see what happens get some structure since I'm getting a um a snake head up here kind of what I'm aiming for might be subtle okay now let me get my Just this little, little something up there. Of course, that's going to look a lot different. Here is the frontal view of the final first stage application of your applied uh, or actual texture with your gesso. Um, and you can see how uh, the shadows are pretty prevalent within some of the scraping and moving. And just trying to create a a, an interesting set of textures. Remember, textures is defined as, as something that entices you to feel. And in this particular uh, uh, actual texture demonstration, you know, it's lifted off of the plane. You know, that's different from um, simulation texture or simulated texture, where that's a texture or a use of technique or, or use of the material to mimic texture, to mimic hair or to mimic uh, wood you know, all the illusionary techniques that we use in drawing to, to make a simulated image. You know, this is an actual texture. Um, so what we need to do now is, um, you know, always take a, a look at it vertically, uh, maybe get a spotlight to it. I really enjoy kind of this, uh, this here. And I'm getting a lot of ideas from the movement of this. Again, I'm getting kind of this snake image here uh, and trying to separate that background uh, with some of this more you know a uh, geometrical texture again i try to do something just a little bit here so later on uh what we are going to do uh, we're going to add more charcoal to play with some of the tones and 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 we're going to have to work with this texture once it's dried um so uh, again uh when i finish with this this is going to be a uh, two-part demonstration but we need this to dry first overnight really well before we go into the next step um, so you can imagine now if we go in here and start applying some more charcoal, it's going to influence the way that mark looks with that uh, uh, first layer of texture. So we're going to have to work with that. And But we're, what we're going to want to do is add more tones and add more contrast and see if we can uh, play with uh, having to deal with that, with that uh, actual texture. I'm going to do a little zoom in here uh, so we get a better look at my results. Again, I have the lighting a little lower than usual because uh, I want to try to get an angle of that texture. Uh, and again, we're also dealing with uh, transparency, the act of uh, the, the almost a palimpsest uh, quality of that uh, 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 gesso where it's drying, as you can see, the drier uh, matter and then uh, the matter surface versus the um, you know the real uh, watery surface right here you know and that's going to expose more of that underneath charcoal uh, and then of course so hopefully when you do your charcoal application uh, before you add your gesso maybe you go darker maybe you uh, do a lot more charcoal maybe you rub it in and really play with that underneath the drawing before you apply that top uh, layer and to really see what happens when that starts to dry and uh, become transparent like you can see right here here's a really good example of some possibilities within that uh, a layering and that overlapping to create that depth again if i went a lot darker with that charcoal uh, that would be more prevalent so you know play around with it again you're going to have a lot more time than me because uh you know you get to to really work with uh, uh the material and i would because uh you know i would want to spend as much time on these as possible because they're fun and and i also have to try myself even no matter how many times i do these assignments or do some demonstrations it, I, i'm trying as hard as you um but you have the benefit of of uh of spending a lot more time so um, i hope you enjoy this first part of the demonstration uh i'll be making a second part for the uh adding of the more value and adding of the more shadows with more charcoal 
Uh, I hope you have fun making your textures. And again, remember, uh, always doing more than one is, is, is the really way to go. So uh, take your time and enjoy the, 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 the breakage of light and, of course, the uh, experimenting with texture. Thank you.